Hey guys, I just wanted to give you a quick little peeky at what I've been doing in the world. Um, this is just going to be really quick, and then it's probably going to be another day before I do any filming while I finish this up. Um, I discovered uh, that I needed a crud ton of more room to um, actually start building the projects I want to start working on. After I finish this, I will be starting the tree farm. In fact, that's probably going to be in this episode, but, you know, probably a day or two from me. I've removed the mountains, and I've kind of terraformed the landscape uh, semi-satisfactorily. And <clears throat> now the hard part becomes removing all of the junk. Gotta replace everything with dirt now. Oh, this is going to be a pain. I just thought I'd give you guys a little F1 cinematic style walk around of the place before I did it. And just so you can kind of see what I've been up to. Just, you know, I don't know. I felt it would be unfair to just do such a massive change and then not kind of show you guys the, um, work in progress. I got so tired of going to my base and filling chestfuls of stuff, I just kind of, you know, do an item run every now and then where I'll fill my inventory up with stuff and then put it back in chest and then go fill my own. Yeah, it's, been, it's been a couple of days working on this, but like I said, I'm going to finish this and what's going to probably be like a day or two for me is going to just be like five seconds for you until you see the next section. So, I will see you in a little bit. Well, I've done it. I torched up and terraformed the area. Although, I will admit I got a little cheap. You'll see on the parts that are mostly covered by snow, there's a lot of exposed stone still because of the fact it's covered by snow. But, um, that's okay because from here it looks fine and... I was so lazy I didn't even bother to get these blocks sticking up out of the ground. I was just like, mm, so much freaking junk. Well, I'm going to go up here and place these blocks I have back. Oh, you can see that I have a bunch more chests for stuff now. <laughs> Lots of cobble and that assortment of good stuff from this projecto. All the coal goes in there. Misc goes in there. She'll throw the snowball in. All right. Well, I'm all out of tools, so I need to make myself another pick. And just take some of this. I need to make myself a pick and shovel diamond combo again. I went through a ton of diamonds and a ton more of iron on this project. Alright, so just do that. And now I filled my furnaces with... um. I've been filling my furnaces with stone as I've been working, so luckily I have just between the coal I've mined up and the furnace smelting I've been doing in between runs, I have just enough to enchant the pick at level 30. So we'll just do that. And efficiency 4 on breaking 3, okay, that's, that's alright, I wish I'd gotten fortune on it. And, um, can't enchant the shovel yet. I'm pop back up here. And let's see here. Start unloading these furnaces. See how far I get with that. And I'll get back to you after I finish the boring job of unloading these furnaces. So I was putting some things away and I discovered that um, I had this diamond pick I had been saving. It was unbreaking to, unbreaking to fortune three. So uh, when I go mining, I'll just have to go dual axe wielding. 
I forgot that was there, which makes me kind of sad because I wasted an enchant on another pick rather than um, enchanting the shovel. But, uh, you know, I don't necessarily need an enchanted shovel to be happy. I'll be fine with uh, a pair of diamond picks. That's what's really important. Okay, well, I finished this project really late at night for me, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the first full run of this wheat farm, and then I want to go get some sleep. Of course, for you, it'll be like five seconds, and then I'll be back talking to you about the tree farm I'm going to do, but for me... It's, uh, it's going to be another day, because I'm, I'm going to go get some sleep, and it is going to be fabulous. Let's see here, how much how much wheat did we get? I have to kind of do this. Um, this wheat farm design wasn't optimal because of the fact that some things do get stuck on sides, but because you have to replan a wheat farm anyway, it doesn't really matter. Hmm. Two and a quarter stack, that seems a little low. Huh. Two and a quarter stack. Well, it's a lot better than my old wheat farm. I'll tell you that for sure. Well, I'm just going to replant this and go to sleep, so a couple seconds and we'll be back talking about a tree farm, tree farm, farm a tree, for a tree, the tree, the tree, the farm. Okay guys, now we are going to build a la tree farm. So the first thing we want to do is I want to um, pick a place out for it. I haven't decided whether I want it towards the front of this section or is the back of this section. It's a tough choice. I think I am going to go with the back because it's so big and then expand forward. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to go here and the first thing I'm going to do is um, this, my tree farm design that I just kind of played with on a creative world um, is going to be in segments of five by seven but for each section, there's two 5x7 segments on either side of a little canal that will carry the items to me. And so that would be 14 trees per segment. So that means we need like, I don't know, five sections. And 5 times 7 is 35, so we need to throw down 35 blocks of dirt as the middle. So I'll just start here and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, I can just go to half a stack, basically, which will mean I've laid down 32 and then 37 will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Wow. This is a big tree farm. I might want to reconsider the size. Hmm. Let's see. Then it would be three. Wow, this is going to take up most of the area I cleared out. I want to pause and think about this for a second. Okay, so I'm back, and I have decided that this is definitely what I want to do, but it is becoming nighttime, so I'm going to go take a sleep and then come back. Alright, so as I'm working on this, I was wanting to talk at you guys about my channel. One second, one, two. Okay guys, this is my um, first non-live action recording. I'm recording over this old section of recording because it was terrible and it's surprisingly out of date by the time I'm posting this. 
Um, since I made this originally right when I was on like the precipice of 70 and now of the time of recording this, I'm over 80. And on top of that, this recording, because I was trying to count and talk about my thank yous, it was kind of slow and wasn't the greatest thing in the world. So I thought I would take the time to go back and in post record a good voiceover to explain what's going on with my channel and my thank yous. So the first people I want to give a shout out to are I am Alex for Life and Mr. Omega Industrial. Those two guys, they're like the people driving me pretty much. They're always commenting, usually have nice things to say. They're like my miniature consolidated community. And now I have one other person aside from those two. I mean, and those two are just amazing. Those comments and the things they say, it's things like that that get me to wake up in the morning and stay up at night to edit and create these videos. But aside from them, I need to give a big shout out to Nativisions. N-I-N-A-T-I-V-I-S-I-O-N-S. If I said that right, he's a much bigger channel than me, like way bigger, probably bigger than I'll ever be. But he created an obsidian generator that's exactly like mine, and I saw his video and I'm like, hey, that's funny, I made one like this too. I wasn't really accusing him, I just kind of found the video, and well, someone had sent me a PM telling me that, hey, look, I think someone's copied your design. I'm like, oh, it's just good old redstoning. Well, he was kind enough to actually mention me in his description, and that day I got something like 10 subscribers after that, which doesn't seem like much, but when 10 subscribers is more than 10% of your current view, like that was like an over 10% increase of subscribers for me that day. And that was just like a big, big thing. So Nativisions, I'm probably saying your name wrong. I can't even say normal names right. Thank you a ton, a ton, a ton. Not that you're watching this because you're a big channel and you have your own channel things to be taken care of, but I still felt like giving you a shout out. I still I still can't believe I miscounted that bad. Look, I placed three blocks down and there's like one block back there. You, you can see why I'm recording over this. I just did a horrible, horrible job the first time around trying to count and talk at the same time. It's just really, really terrible. All right, um, now I wanna give a shout out to all of you what what is there? I mean, at the recording of this video, I probably had 20 more subscribers than when I first recorded this video. I mean, it's kind of insane. I want to give a shout out to every single one of you who has subscribed to me since then. I know a lot of you have come from my tutorials, so I don't even know if you're watching this, but still, thank you a ton. It means a lot to me. I came from a theater department. That's where I got my public speaking skills. Although listening to some of my recordings, I'm pretty atrocious at talking. Like my drama director would just want to slap me. I'm not sure, that slap probably sounded really bad on camera. But thank you to all of you guys. Like I said, I came from a drama theater and I didn't like drama so much because it was just me up there. I like, I like talking to people and I like YouTube because it's like I can perform without having to be on the performer scene and on top of that I get to talk to all these wonderful people in the Minecraft community I mean you guys are the best I can't say it enough you guys are just top-notch I've there's never been a gaming community as awesome as you guys have been I mean I've been a part of the TF2 scene I've been a part of the Gmod scene but the Minecraft people it's like I, they're just amazing. I don't, it's so weird to see like a gaming community like that. It's like we're all friends and family here. Just really awesome, you guys. I'm so happy to see such a strong, friendly internet community like that. And lastly, I want to talk about is my website. You guys may have noticed in the description, I always put a little thing that says clicky, colon, colon, http, colon, slash, slash, www dot shadowstudios9.com smiley face except there's no smiley face I should probably start acting that after this video so I won't look like a liar but I probably won't and will forget about it because I forget about things all the time but right now that site's more of a placeholder I'm not doing much of anything with it I'm thinking maybe later um, 
because the real reason I got onto YouTube is because I love cinematography and stuff, but I don't have a lot of time or the people necessarily to get together and be able to do a lot of live action stuff. Um, I just, yeah, I just don't have the resources right now to make good live action stuff. I hope to do some more live action stuff in the future. At that point, I'll probably make a second channel for it because the people who subscribed for YouTube probably won't want to be looking at my live action stuff. I don't know. I'll figure that out when we get there. But like I said, I have that channel it's, or that website. It's probably going to be a community website, maybe forms, maybe behind the scenes. Um, I don't. I don't really know. If you guys right now have any ideas for what that website should be, you can leave a comment. Tell me your idea. I know, I mean, the video I uploaded today, like, I'm used to my videos getting, like, five views on the day I upload. The one I uploaded today was, like, 20 views instantly, and I'm like, wow, I, things are looking up in the world. I Again, thank you guys. Absolutely astonishing I can't believe it but again if you have something you would like to see the website be becoming you can go ahead and tell me that in the description below I, I don't know maybe you don't want a website I I just don't know but like I said I'll probably have it's nice to have my own website for Shadow Studios 9 in the future should I need it I don't know we'll, we'll see where that goes um Another thing I want to address, I've been doing a lot of Tekkit videos, a lot, a lot, a lot of Tekkit videos, and I know uh, maybe some of you don't like the Tekkit videos, I know according to my analytics most of my subscribers actually come from my tutorials, so I don't know, you guys, I'm not sure how many of my subscribers actually watch my Let's Plays versus my mod reviews and tutorials, but don't worry. Um, the reason there were so many more Tekkit videos is because I was on, I'm the administrator of that server, and early on, watching the chat, I watching the what is what the console, watching the console, we were getting lots of errors and things, and the people on the server were new to Tekkit, so I've been on the server a lot, monkeying around, and so I didn't want to stop making Minecraft videos because of it, so I just made a bunch of videos on the server while I happened to be on and off there working and helping things out. So, a bunch of those, but I am getting back to my more regular series. I've recorded some Hunger Games, some LP, some Redstone stuff, as you've probably seen. I got another, it's, I don't know, it's probably been two weeks since I posted a tutorial and I got that wool sell up. Yeah, two days ago? I, I don't know when I'm going to post this video. I'm not going to pretend like I know when I posted this video. But, like I said, I want to get back to my regular series. However, you will have to wait for the mod reviews a little bit, because I want to give the mod makers, I don't know, a week or two to get um, their heads wrapped around 1.3.1 before I start looking at the mods. It just tends to be better that way. And I can see that my time to record this is starting to run out, so you guys will jump back to the live recording, and I'll be saying toodles, have fun with Pat. Okay guys, so I got my wool and dirt in, and as you can see I ended up having to change the pattern because I had a lot less wool than I thought. So what I'm going to do now is create a little fence pattern, or not fence pattern, I'm going to use the power of stackable signs in 1.3 to go ahead and fill this in so the water can't flood down here. Now this little ditch that I'm in right now is going to be the water flow. So this is where the water is going to flow down and will not. the water will push all the drops into this little trough and this trough will have its own water in it that it then disperses down and out into the beautiful, beautiful world. And by world, I mean my inventory, so I can, wow, do, I thought I had made enough signs. Hmm. I guess I somehow miscalculated that. Well, anyway, I'll go make a couple more and finish this off and then pull you back around for the next part of this projecto. 
Okay, it's now beautiful sunny daytime, and I've gone ahead and did like the first layer of wood here. And now I've also crafted my tin dispensers. So now what we need to do is just go along and plop these in here. And these are going to be filled with water. And that way, is this off? One, two, three, four, five, six. Son of a biscuit. Oh my goodness. Why, why do these things always get off? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Is one of these too short? One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One second, I, I need to figure out what I did wrong. Well, it turns out I had made this too, too long, which is what um, ended up screwing up the pattern at the end here. So caught that, rectified my mistake, and everything is good now. So I'm just going to go in and get all of these guys planted, well not planted, get all of these dispensers installed. And then I just have to go in here and I'm going to put water buckets in each one of these and build a second layer around this and I will bring you guys back once again after that. Okay guys, I've now lined it all the way around, got my dispensers with water, got my little water trough, and I've got an outflow down right here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a little collection area with a button, and after I set that up, I'll take you guys around and I'll just show you really quickly how I'm going to set up the redstone. Super simple stuff actually. So um, basically, yeah, I'm going to be building this... Um, the area I want to be standing for the collection area. Well, oh my goodness. This project, it always seems like I start these projects and I'm like, I'm going to do this project in one episode. And I'm like, wow, it's, it's a lot more than one episode. I'm actually going to check how long I've been recording. Yeah, I think I want to end this episode here. I try not to make my episodes that long that often. So I'm just going to end here. I'm going to say toodles, and in the next episode, we shall continue our tree farm.